call our Board of Supervisors meeting to order for April 25th, 2017, and we want to welcome each and every one of you uh, to this morning's uh, meeting, and we have uh, a fairly full agenda and a, I think a, a very lively one, and uh, we're going to get a chance to dive into that in just a moment, but w before we do that, I'll just ask Flo just to very quickly uh, call the uh, roll to establish a quorum and then uh, read any quick announcements, and then we're going to invite the Sheriff's Honor Guard to uh, lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance here in just a moment. So, Flo. Good morning, Supervisors. Cerna. Here. Kennedy. Peters. Here. Frost. Here. Natoli. Here. And you have a quorum. This meeting of the Sacramento County Board of Supervisors is Cablecast Live on Metro Cable 14, the Local Government Affairs Channel on the Comcast, Consolidated Communications, and AT&T U-verse Cable Systems. The meeting is closed captioned and is webcast at www.sacmetrocable.tv. Today's meeting will be repeated Friday, April 28th at 6 p.m. on Channel 14. A DVD copy is available for checkout from any local library branch. Members of the audience wishing to address the board may fill out a speaker slip and hand it to staff. When the chair calls your name, please come to the podium. And also, please silence your electronic devices at this time. Okay, with that then, um, we'll get underway and we're going to invite the uh, Sacramento County Sheriff Color Guard to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance, and so we'll turn it over to our uh, Color Guard to uh, um, lead us in that. So please stand. <coughs> Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Order, home. <coughs> Ready, folks. Maybe seated. And how about a round of applause for our sheriff's color guard, please? And since we're going to have our volunteer recognition ceremony here in just a, a few moments, uh, uh, that's typically how we will kick off uh, the beginning of that. And so, again, we want to uh, thanks to them and certainly to all of our volunteers and the folks we're going to recognize for a number of different uh, contributions uh, as we move through the, through the agenda this morning. So uh, we have a bit of business to tend to uh, before we get to that portion. So I'll turn to the clerk and uh, we'll take up the uh, consent calendar. Okay, for your consent matters, items 1 through 36. For item 14, you are adopting an ordinance, chapters uh, amending chapters 4.06 and 4.07 of the Sacramento County Code related to general business licenses and tobacco <laughs> retailer licenses. You waived full reading on this on April 11th. 
for item number 19, you are introducing an ordinance amending chapter 16.9 of the title 16 of the Sacramento County Code relating to construction permit fees, waiving full reading of the ordinance and continuing to May 9th for adoption. For item 21, you are adopting an ordinance amending chapter 6.87 and 6.88 and repealing chapter 6.89, title 6 of the Sacramento County Code relating to marijuana and amending chapter 16.18, Title 16 of the Sacramento County Code relating to public nuisances. You waived full reading on this on April 11th. And then for item 25, I do need a motion to continue this to May 9th. This is the resolution of attention to purchase approximately 12.64 acres of vacant land located in the old Florentown special planning area from Farm to Future Associates Limited Partnership to facilitate a community park and urban farm. So moved. Okay. Second. Move and second then continue item 25 till May the 9th. Will that be a timed item or re remain on the consent calendar? I believe it'll remain on the consent calendar for now. Okay, that's the motion. I don't have anybody signed up on item 25. Um, nothing further then please vote. Unanimous vote. And that concludes my notes. Okay, uh, I know we have a speaker on item 21, so we'll um, hold that off of consent for a moment, but uh, let me turn to my colleagues uh, and see if there's any other items you wish to comment on or, or call out. Uh, uh, Ms. Frost? Any items? Okay, Ms. Peters? Mr. Kennedy? Thank you, Mr. Chair. I just wanted to uh, record uh, a, a no vote on item number 21. Okay, so noted. Mr. Cerner? I, too, am going to record a no vote on item 21. Okay. So no. All right. Um, <clears throat> I would just uh, indicate that on item uh, seven, um, uh, Mr. County Executive, I know I'd ask a question. There have been some response. I just wanted to, in the staff report, it pointed out there had been an increase. Uh, obviously, this is an appropriation increase to cover the cost of dialysis for uh, those that are incarcerated in county jail prison. But um, I wanted to make sure that we got some explanation behind what that increase was. It, it um, wasn't clear uh, to me uh, what, you know, obviously you need to do this in order to provide proper treatment for folks that are incarcerated, but. We'll provide follow-up information. If you would, okay, thanks. Um, all right, with that then let's, um, we have a speaker on item 21, uh, and so we'll go ahead and call that item. I'm gonna, you already read it to the record, it's an ordinance, but uh, okay. um, call it up if you could, Ms. Sure. Clark. Uh, item number 21, uh, adopting an ordinance amending chapter 6.87 and 6.88 and repealing 6.89 Title VI of the Sacramento County Code related to marijuana. Also amending chapter 16.18 Title 16 of the code relating to public nuisances. Okay, all right, I have um, um, three speakers on this item now, so I'll uh, take them in the order I received them. Uh, first is uh, Mr. Jackson, uh, James uh, J. Jackson. I know Mr. Jackson has uh, corresponded with us, and thank you for that correspondence. And then that'll be followed by uh, Lucio Dare, or yeah, Lucrio Lucino, Lucrio. and then Angela Day, or Dare. Thank you, Mr. Jackson. Chair, and thank you to the members of the board for giving me this time, and thank you for the two no votes there. Um, I really do appreciate it. My name is James G. Jackson, Jr. Uh, I am a former teacher and a medical cannabis patient, uh, and I am here to implore you today to stop your anti-cannabis actions. Um, I have already sent you multiple correspondences, as has been noted, uh, with information about this topic. And I would just like to stress the following facts. And I would like to stress that these are facts. These can be verified by the New York Times, the LA Times, CNN, and CBS, among several other media outlets. Um, first of all, can, uh, California is projected to make one billion in cannabis tax revenue alone. Um, and laws that hinder revenue collection defeat the purpose of this board. Um, our county passed Prop 64 by 9%. Banning sale or production of something the majority approves of is inherently undemocratic. Um, uh, and I do say that with all respect. Um, Medical cannabis is already creating job growth. Union membership in groups such as the UFCW skyrocketed when cannabis workers were accepted into their ranks. And lastly, uh, lastly, I would just like to say that states with legal cannabis have lower crime rates and fewer opioid overdoses. I have already lost two friends to this epidemic. Um, 
these are just some of the reasons why I am here today. I apologize if I'm speaking quickly. I'm very nervous. Right, but these are just some of the reasons why I'm here today. And I implore this board, since the eyes of the nation are on our state now, as they were with Oregon, Washington, uh, and Colorado, I implore you to not hinder the growth of the cannabis industry. Help it, because times have changed. We have the money. We have the votes. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Jackson. Okay, uh, Lou Buccio, uh, Dare, or Dari. And followed by Angela. Good morning. Good morning. Hi, my name is Lucio, and I just want to thank you for adopting this ordinance. I've lived in this county my whole life, and thank you. Okay, okay. thank you, Lucio. Okay, uh, then Angela. Thank you, Lucio. And then uh, we have Mackenzie Wilson. Wilson. Okay, Mackenzie S W. Okay. Good morning. Good morning. I don't think Lucio counted on going before his mother. Oh, well, he can, he can come back up. He still has some time left. He can come back up if you like. So. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank you for taking on this issue. My name is Angela Duray. I've been a resident of this county for 30 years now. Um, one of the things I have to uh, tell you that I'm also the director of prevention for National Council on Alcoholism and Drug Dependence, and I speak all over the state and also look at this issue all over the country. I have to commend you for having some prudence in this matter. We really have been looking at what's happening in other communities. I think that putting the brakes on an issue is really good thinking. It's really wise. We don't have to decide this way next year or the year after or the year after. But for now, to see what other communities are doing, we have so much evidence that increasing the likelihood of kids using is what happens when we allow things like um, cultivation or um, having uh, locations where folks can buy marijuana. <clears throat> it's not something we have to always decide, but I think it's a good idea for us to put the brakes on, and research and science says that as well, as does um, a lot of the experience that's happened in many communities. So I want to thank Sacramento County. I am proud to be um, a resident of this county, and I'm grateful that you're really paying attention to this issue. Thank you, Angela. Thank you <clears throat> both. Okay, and then uh, lastly, I have Mackenzie Wilson. Mackenzie? Good morning. Good morning. Um, I come to speak, I don't know how to explain that. Um, I kind of disagree. Okay, that's okay. That just said. Not, not the first time it's occurred in these chambers, I can assure yeah, you. Yeah, so. Okay, okay. <laughs> See, I disagree with what she just said. Um, <laughs> Marijuana is not, is actually the lack of science is because of our taboo nature towards it. Um, this is actually something that is practiced to help uh, wean people off of using drugs and things like that, but that's kind of besides my point. What I'm really up here to talk about is the fact that this is a mistake. This is a mistake to allow our county and our city to be behind the rest of the state. Um, I understand doing some due diligence in how we can take preventative measures might be in order, but regardless, putting a ban on this for a year is going to be detrimental not just to the city of Sacramento, but to like the revenue that can come in, to the jobs that can come in, to the textile industry that this really is. This is not about smoking marijuana. This is clothing. This is oils, tinctures, medicine. You know what I mean? This is an entire industry that we would miss out on for an entire year. An entire year, it, may, it seems like a blink of time, but it is not, given what's going on across the country right now, right? What's going on across the state and what's going on in our just, I mean, up top. We have Oregon, Washington, Colorado, who have come up with, with a plan to allow for something like this to be created. And I really hope that my, account, my, my board of supervisors are going to take the due diligence that it takes to create a plan because putting us behind is not the way to go. Uh, thank you very much for your time. Okay, thank you, Mackenzie. Okay, those are the speakers I had on the topic. I have a colleague who wants to speak. I just want to point out for the audience uh, that the ordinance before us uh, allows for the uh, personal um, um, cultivation indoors for uh, up to uh, nine plants. Uh, state law, uh, Prop 64 provided for uh, at, at least uh, six. 
Uh, we are, by this ordinance though, uh, prohibiting commercial cultivation and are not <laughs> providing um, for dispensaries in the unincorporated area of the county. The seven cities in this uh, county have the ability to make their own determinations about it, and the city of Sacramento, to uh, comments a moment ago, uh, has uh, you know chosen a different path. Uh, this is consistent with our current ordinance, and again, I appreciate certainly the comments from uh, those who uh, support and those who uh, may see it differently, but um, that's what's before us this morning. Obviously, there's detail embedded in the ordinance before us. So uh, to my colleagues, uh, Susan Peters, and followed by Phil Cernan. Susan. Well, Don, you pretty much said what I was going to say. I was going to point out to people that this is ordinance is for the unincorporated area of Sacramento County. The cities in Sacramento County will make their own ordinance. And so this is just for the 570,000 people who live in the unincorporated area who barely passed this. It did not pass. Uh, the, the margin was changed primarily by the voters in Sacramento City. And uh, the other is, as uh, Supervisor Natoli said, is that it still allows nine plants to be grown in your house for medical purposes or recreational purposes. So. Those two things are important for the speakers who are here today to know. Okay. Thanks, Susan. Not enough. Okay. Uh, uh, super, is what it is. Su Supervisor Cerna and then followed by Supervisor Kennedy. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I just want to uh, respectfully request uh, through the chair that we actually take a separate vote on this versus. Uh, okay. We can call it off a consent for that. Yes, we can. Okay. okay. All right. S so noted. We'll do that. Okay. Um, anything else? No. Sir, okay. Supervisor Kennedy. I wasn't going to speak. I, sp I think I spoke enough last time on this, but since we all were chiming in, I, I thought I would once more just reiterate uh, that I think that the status quo isn't working and that we continue to do the same thing. Uh, and if you just go into many of the neighborhoods in the unincorporated area of Sacramento County, you'll see the illegal grows growing more and more and more and us not having the ability to regulate those and put them in a place that's more appropriate and safer for the neighborhoods and the community. And uh, of course, that was illustrated by another shooting uh, related to an illegal grow house in South Sacramento on Sunday. Um, so if we continue to just ignore this, in my mind, um, status quo is not working. So that's why I have uh, been voting against this and will continue to do so. Okay. All right. Any other comments by members of the board? Then um, we have uh, the consent calendar has been uh, asked that we uh, call this out uh, specifically so we can do that, pull it off the consent calendar, uh, entertain a motion on the ordinance. Okay. And move item 21. Okay. Second. Okay, it's moved and seconded to approve item 21, the ordinance before us. Again, the acknowledgments from the comments that we've received. Uh, nothing further by board members, please vote. And the motion carries with Supervisors Cerna and Kennedy voting no. <clears throat> okay. All right, thank you. Uh, and then we'll move to the uh, balance of the consent calendar, uh, please. Uh, I'll move the balance of consent. All right. Second. Okay, move and second to approve the consent calendar. Um, uh, balance of that, if nothing further, I know other folks signed up on any item on that consent calendar, anyone else? Any other item? If not, then please vote. Unanimous vote. And then I'll turn to our county executive who uh, Im embedded in all that, we did have uh, an appointment that we wanna call out and uh, introduce someone, so yeah. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair, members of the board. It is my pleasure today and thank the board for appointing Mike Penrose as our new administrator and also chief deputy county, I mean, deputy county exec for public works and infrastructure. Mike has been with us since 1991, since 2006. He's uh, been on various director level position and I believe that he is a very good candidate to have for us to head that agency up. And with that, I would like to bring Mike in to uh, make some comments. Okay. Congratulations, Mike. Good morning, members of the board. And uh, County Executive. Um, let's see if I just wanted to acknowledge that it's a great honor to be uh, selected for the opportunity to serve as the agency administrator of the new agency, Public Works and Infrastructure. Um, I have had the opportunity over the past few years to work with many of the departments and groups that are embedded in the new agency structure. Um, and uh, I'm looking forward to the opportunity to continue to work with those groups as well as others to bring forward the, 
important services that we provide for public works and infrastructure to all the citizens in Sacramento County. It's just really an honor to have an opportunity to be able to do that. Uh, and I want to thank the County Executive for acknowledging me as, uh, and offering me up for the opportunity to do it and your board uh, endorsing that. I think there's wonderful opportunities in this new structure that's going forward for us to enhance and improve uh, the services that we provide to the, to the citizens of Sacramento County. So uh, thank you very much. Congratulations. Right. Congratulations. Mike. Mike. All right, congratulations, Mike. Uh, good choice, Mr. Gale. Thank you. Um, all right, uh, with that, any other announcements? If not, then we'll get into some of our recognitions, and we're, we'll take up the bulk of the volunteer rec uh, recognitions in a moment, but we have a few other presentations uh, in advance of that. So if you want to, I guess I'll be coming down and call those out. Item 37 is the presentation of resolution honoring the life and contributions of Bernard Marx, Holocaust survivor and educator. I'm going to take a moment, and Bernard, he's uh, prepared to offer some comments as well. But we are very, um, I think, uh, privileged and uh, certainly pleased to have with us today a gentleman who uh, I've known for a number of years. He resides in District 5, but uh, has been a member of this community for many, many years, um, but has, and I think uh, certainly represents um, a, a real profile and courage. Uh, this gentleman, uh, as you're going to hear in just a moment, and you'll be hearing from him in just a moment as well, uh, is a Holocaust survivor. And I know uh, this morning uh, I heard on the news, maybe as well as others on the way in, that uh, the uh, president and administration uh, earlier today was recognizing in Washington, D.C., uh, some of the uh, uh, Holocaust uh, uh, survivors, as well as obviously some of the uh, World War II veterans who were there to uh, enter the camps and, um, and, and free some of the survivors. And this gentleman, Mr. Marks, that stands next to me is one of those survivors. And uh, his story is very compelling. One, obviously, it was shared uh, by many, but uh, again, as time has passed and folks have um, have uh, passed away, those that can, who have lived that experience and really tell the story of the Holocaust during World War II are becoming fewer in numbers, and we're, again, very privileged to have Mr. Marks here this morning. So <clears throat> the um, the reason we have Bernard here is one to certainly hear from him and recognize his good work as an ambassador for this community, but certainly for uh, this country and the world in telling uh, the story. And so I'm going to take just a moment and uh, go through the resolution because I think it captures certainly a snippet of his life, uh, but also uh, the, the reason why we're recognizing him here this morning. Uh, Bernard has <clears throat> dedicated his long and fruitful life uh, to the service of humanity after facing some of the greatest challenges posed to mankind over the past century. <clears throat> and from it all, he emerged with determination, compassion, and a soulful wisdom, which he consistently shares with others, particularly focused, uh, focusing on younger people. Bernard was born in 1927 as Bear Mikowski? Mikowski. Mikowski in Lodz, Poland. He was a grandson of two rabbis, son of a business entrepreneur and member of an extended family of 200. Remember that mo number in a moment because it's going to uh, be very striking when I move through this. Bernard, at the age of seven, was swept up in the Nazi occupation of his homeland. He was shipped to the infamous German concentration camps, including Auschwitz and Dachau, where his life was spared due to his, quote, angel father's intervention and where he and others did hard labor and survived on a daily piece of bread and a bowl of soup. He was liberated by the 12th Armored Division in 1945 and soon learned that only five of his family members had survived the Nazi death camps. Following the war, Bernard immigrated to the United States where he was met by the words of Emma Lazarus as he came to this country. Quote, give me your tired, your poor, your huddled masses yearning to breathe free, and began a new life serving in the United States Armed Forces as an Army soldier, where he received two bronze stars for his service, a presidential citation from President Harry S. Truman, and a citation from the Korean president for his work in that country. Of note, Bernard also served as a witness at the Dachau trials for war crimes committed by the Nazi government. 
1954, Bernard moved to California, where he worked for Aerojet as an engineer. He raised his family here in this community, and simultaneously started on a path as an educator, lecturer, and messenger of Tycoon Olam? Tycoon Olam. Tycoon Olam, which stands for Heal the World. And through his tireless commitment, Bernard has educated thousands and thousands of young students and adults on the injustices and inhumanity of the Holocaust. He recorded many hours and numerous hours of moving testimony and online video, and has authored books with the aim of furthering humanity, education, and justice, with justice being very close to his heart. Bernard has touched the hearts and minds and lives of people he's, as he's spoken throughout the world. He's gone to numerous schools. He's gone to schools here in our community, but certainly up and down the state and throughout the, the country and, and abroad. He's spoken at universities around the world. He's volunteered to help young offenders, established the Eleanor J. Marks Foundation to help preserve the Holocaust essays of young students, and has actively volunteered with many nonprofit organizations for decades in this community. And Bernard has been nationally and internationally recognized for his lifetime of work, including receiving the 2014 and 2015 Man of the Year Awards from the Jewish community, the Akiba Award, and the Volunteer Spirit Award, along with many other civic and, uh, and uh, national awards and citations. So it is th today this Board of Supervisors, certainly as chair of the board on behalf of the people of this community, Bernard, that we want to recognize you uh, for your, and commend you for your courage, your compassion, and your lifetime of work in which you've dedicated yourself to telling the difficult lesson of history so that the tragic events of, this, of, your, of your time and of our times are not ever again repeated. Uh, in closing, with deep appreciation and gratitude, it can be said of Bernard Marx that never losing faith in humanity and his value of education, he continues to speak to all of our better angels. And so this board congratulates you, we commend you, we applaud you. It's just for you, Bernard, so. <laughs> I'll turn it over to you for a few moments. Mr. Chairman, members of the board, I am grateful for this proclamation that recognizes the importance of keeping our history, both the proud and the shameful, alive for future generations. One day, in not too distant future, there will be no more Holocaust survivors to teach these lessons from direct personal experience who know the signs of danger that arise from both evil ambition and fear, ambition that can accompany unchecked political power and the fear inflicted on people who become the victims of those who will abuse their power. Unfortunately, I feel that fear is rising in people across this country and right here in the Sacramento County. The fear of being ripped away from your American-born children. The fear of being attacked and persecuted because you are a Muslim or Latino or Jewish. And I'm afraid that this is happening today. I thank you for the acknowledgement, the importance of my work, especially in this current political climate and let me close by telling you just a short and personal story. <coughs> I spent most of my childhood in Nazi ghettos, Auschwitz and Dachau, and their subcamps. It was, it was a childhood you would not wish on anyone. When I sailed into the harbor of New York as a young refugee for sanctuary, from humanities that millions suffered, I was met by this big lady of liberty who made the people like me an offer. Give me your tired, your poor, your huddled masses, yearning to breathe free, the wretched refuse of your teeming shore. Send these homeless tempters to me. I lift my lamp besides the golden door.
I want these words of Emma Lazarus to guide this country and this community in Sacramento, to guide this country for our citizens here to have the courage to continue to offer the same sanctuary of peace, opportunity for people who need our help. Thank you for your thoughtfulness and your time. Shalom. Hey, hey, Don, can we all come down and join you? Oh, yeah, come up. Yeah, come up, sure. Yeah, come on down. Yeah, you got a picture with everybody. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I usually get the back row when I have a... Item 38, presentation of resolution recognizing Capital Region Small Business Week, April 30th through May 6, 2017. Thank you, and we have a PowerPoint. Good morning, Chair Natoli, <coughs> honorable board members. I'm Clark Whitten with the Office of Economic Development. We are here today to recognize the second annual Capital Region Small Business Week, which is May 1st through May 5th. This is a local effort to recognize entrepreneurs and small businesses. According to a recent census, 94% of all businesses in Sacramento County are small businesses. The entire week is designed to connect small businesses with local resources and celebrate the important role they play in our region. Our local effort, Capital Region Small Business Week, was started last year by the U.S. Small Business Administration and SMUD. And this year, Sacramento County is the host of Roadmap to Success Small Business Symposium. Our, our, our event is going to be at the uh, McClellan Park Event Center, May 2nd, from 8 to 2. On hand, we'll have resources to help businesses start and grow by providing expertise in permitting, licensing, mentoring, business opportunities, and funding solutions. And we are expecting over 250 attendees. Now, I would like to invite Joseph McClure, Sacramento District Director for the U.S. Small Business Administration. After Joseph's brief comments, we will have the rest of the committee representatives come forward to accept the resolution and take a photo with the Board of Supervisors. Thank you so much, Chairman Natoli and members of the board. I'm excited and privileged to stand here before you. Um, but I'm actually humbled to be able to stand at the podium that Bernard stood at. Um, that was incredible. Um, so my remarks are going to be a little screwed up here after hearing <laughs> that. Um, but as uh, every year since 1963, the President of the United States has issued a proclamation announcing National Small Business Week, which recognizes the critical contributions of America's entrepreneurs and small business owners. And as the only federal agency uh, focused on entrepreneurship and small business, um, I'm excited to be the district director for, here, uh, for the SBA here in Sacramento. And uh, as was mentioned, there's, there's, uh, there is some discord going on, right, in this country. Um, our new administrator was just uh, confirmed by the Senate, uh, Linda McMahon, 89 to 11. Um, so as you can see, small business entrepreneurship um, is really a bipartisan uh, topic, um, and I think one that we can all get behind. Uh, more than half of Americans either own or work for a small business, and they create two out of every three jobs in the U.S. each year. 
Um, so yeah, we've got big business, um, we've got government, but really what's the backbone of the U.S. economy? It's small business and entrepreneurs. So what I'd like to do is recognize and, and call up uh, the team that made up the 2017 Capital Region Small Business Week Planning Committee, and, uh, and then we'll, we'll have a photo. So uh, SMUD, Sacramento Municipal Utility District. Got the Sacramento Business Journal. California State Board of Equalization. The Capital Region Small Business Development Center. The Sacramento Metropolitan Chamber of Commerce. The Sacramento Asian Pacific Chamber of Commerce. California Capital Financial Development Corporation. And the California Capital Women's Business Center. Only a few more. <laughs> City of Sacramento Economic Development. City of Elk Grove Economic Development. And last but certainly not least, the County of Sacramento Economic Development and the Business Environmental Resource Center. This was truly uh, an effort um, with all these organizations coming together and, and as a collection recognizing small businesses and putting a week together next week that I already told my wife, if, if I see you like five minutes next week, it'll be a lot. Because <laughs> uh, we're going to be all over the place. But anyway, thank you so much. Well, very quickly, again, Joseph, and certainly to all the partners here uh, that have worked to put together uh, a really active week, but certainly um, I think to focus on small businesses <laughs> in this community on a daily basis and what they contribute uh, is very, very important. So we certainly applaud all of you for your good work and those organizations you represent. And uh, we, it sounds like you're going to have a really busy week. Yeah, so. <laughs> anyway, so we have a uh, proclamation and we have frame copies. And aren't you going to come up? <laughs> yeah, Don, before you take yeah. the picture, I, I just want to say we, we had an event in uh, Arden Arcade last week uh, announcing the symposium. Uh, tons of people there. Uh, there. There are close to 1,700 small businesses in just in Arden Arcade, and they really are the backbone of the, our community. And uh, I have spoken a couple times at the symposium, and uh, it's always well attended, and I encourage anyone watching to come to the symposium because it's impressive, interesting, and you'll meet a lot of people, and maybe you can do some business with each other. Good. So congratulations to all of you. Thank you. Very good. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you all. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Hey, good to see you. Thanks. Item. Item 39 is the presentation of resolution recognizing May is Bike Month in Sacramento County. With me is Marilyn Bryant, and uh, again, a familiar face uh, when it comes to certainly this event, but I think with uh, the advocacy that she's done, certainly with our uh, TMAs and with uh, working with the city and county and the cities and certainly the region, um, uh, has certainly done a lot of good work. And thank you, Marilyn, for, for your efforts and for being here this morning. Uh, this is uh, kind of an annual recognition. I know this board over the years has proclaimed May as Bike Month. Uh, on uh, many, many occasions, but again, this year we highlight uh, the aspects of not only biking during May, but certainly throughout the course of a year. And I think uh, one of the, the, the things that uh, um, really made the news here in the last few, we few weeks is that bike share is coming to Sacramento. Um, so if you don't have a bike, you don't have to, have to worry about owning one anymore. Now you can share somebody else's, right? Right. Yeah. 
anyway, a lot of communities have that, and I think from the standpoint of, of exercise, but clean air and uh, uh, alleviating congestion and addressing issues relative to, uh, to I think, just the footprint of, of, of our community and having a healthier community, but one that, you know, uses different modes, certainly biking and, and, and walking along with the other ways we get around is a very, very important aspect, I think, has grown in popularity, but we have grown in the appreciation that our community has for, for biking. And I know that uh, <coughs> at least one member of our board keeps a bicycle in his office, so uh, <laughs> Mr. Cerna. Another one has his down in the garage. Oh, too, yeah, that's so. right. And one keeps one down in the garage, so. And if I biked in, I'd have to stay overnight so I could get home the next day. So <laughs> it's a little bit of a trek. But at any rate, Marilyn, uh, in all seriousness, we want to certainly recognize uh, the efforts of, of all of our folks uh, who uh, work to put on this uh, event throughout the course of a month. And I know that there's some challenges regarding tallying how, much, uh, how many miles you bike and so forth. And there's different events. One that we want to highlight, and maybe you can talk a little more about it, is um, what's now being termed the Great Scott. Uh, a bike and walk event. Uh, it's the seventh annual and uh, includes some of the you know, scenic uh, countryside in the eastern part of the county uh, uh, that both uh, Supervisor Frost and I uh, happen to represent immediately, but certainly are on the rolling foothills uh, in the area between <coughs> Rancho Marietta and the uh, city of Folsom, the Rancho Cordova, and El Dorado County, who all participate in that event. And I'll let you tell more about when that is and how people can sign up if they want to participate in that. But again, we want to recognize the efforts of all those who uh, uh, you know, work to put on the events during May is Bike Month in 2017 but also the fact that you can bike uh, anytime, any day. And I would just note that our county executive, he makes uh, a bit of a, a, a biking trek a couple times a week. So you keep your bike in your office? No, take it home, then bring it back. You, oh, take it home, bring it back, okay. <laughs> but so again, there, there are some folks who are, are, are leading the way uh, here in the county organization. And again, I, we want to uh, join with the community in proclaiming May as Bike Month here in Sacramento County and know that it makes for healthier citizens and communities uh, through the many benefits bicycling and walking offer. So with that, I'm going to give this to, to Marilyn, and uh, you can share, cut it up in pieces if you want, uh, with, your, <laughs> with your team. And anyway, share with us, Marilyn, some of the other activities we would. All right. Thank you, Board of Supervisors. You know, uh, from here I'm going to a conference UC Davis professor on uh, the revolution in transportation, and I know you're all seeing that revolution. So before you eventually call for a bot to buzz down the street with this little suitcase-like thing and bring you your stuff from the pharmacy or the grocery store, you could think about, wow, maybe I should just go ride my bicycle over there instead. Or before you get in the car that's going to drive you around without you even having to uh, be behind the wheel, you might think, wow, if I got on my bicycle, I would be just full of joy. It's amazing. Sometimes I think, oh, but I got to get this and that together and go, and then I get out on the bike and start riding, and it's just wonderful. And so we have every year people start riding in May because there are so many other organizations that have taken this on and said, oh, it's bike month. We can do this or that. It's just wonderful. If you go to mayisbikemonth.com, look at the calendar of events, you'll see all kinds of things that we don't even have to put together anymore. But the one that we're very happy about, and it's just an, another, wow, this is wonderful to be on my bicycle is Sunday, May 7th, when you can get out there now 30 miles, more than 30 miles of incredibly beautiful roads to be on and not have to think about a car there because it's bicycles and pedestrians for 30 miles out around Scott Road. You can, and there are, if you go to the um, website, Great Scott, what is it? Uh, bike Great Scott. BikeGreatScott.com. You'll see the map. You'll see all the different entrance places you can come in. There's going to be music, events, food trucks all day. So from 8 to 10, the fast bicyclists will be out. And then from 10 to 3, everyone will be out bicycling on those roads. And it's just a glorious thing to be out in the fields and going through the trees uh, without having any cars on the roads. So thank you very much. And I hope to see you out there bicycling during May. Thanks,
yeah. the team up yeah. from and the county. And I would county. just note that uh, Mike Penrose, who we met a little earlier this morning, but I know that he and the Department of Transportation with the county, certainly they've been a, a real uh, main force behind the Great Scott Bike uh, event and uh, have actually done one down the, down the Delta and, and, and Bob as well. I know you guys have been a, a part of this and uh, certainly want to compliment you. Just remember, be nice to the cows when you're out there. <laughs> <laughs> right? Okay. Oh, you're okay, Richard? Anybody else? Okay. Yeah, Mike, anybody else? Why are you going to be in the picture? Get some attention. <laughs> You've been doing this for a while. Get in here. Item 40, review and comment on the first five Sacramento Commission's 2018 strategic plan. Okay, we have Julie Galileo with us, and then this will be our last order of business, and then we'll take up the volunteer recognition, correct? Correct. Okay, all right, so bear with us, and uh, we'll get to you, all of you in just a moment. So, good morning, Julie. Good morning, supervisors. I'm pleased to present to you today our uh, strategic plan for fiscal years 2018 through 2021. And this plan is our roadmap uh, to how First Five will invest to have comprehensive services, uh, prevention and early intervention services for children and families. As you can see from this graph, uh, First Five has fewer dollars to invest in our upcoming strategic plan. That's primarily due to our decreasing revenue, uh, fewer people smoking, as well as our strategic spending down of our reserves over the past decade. So in 2009, the commission stepped in and um, helped assist the county to fund some critical services that would have gone away during the recession. Um, some of those services include medical clearance exams, oral health screenings, lactation consultants for WIC, um, our crisis nurseries, as well as our Birth and Beyond program. The 2018 strategic plan uh, will have a 21% reduction overall in our budget. <coughs> and this is the first of two uh, step downs that will happen the next step down in 2021. <coughs> To help guide us through the process of our strategic planning, uh, the Commission developed six strategic funding principles, which you see here. Um, the toughest one of these principles to implement in the planning process was make narrow and deep investments. It meant that we couldn't continue funding everything um, sort of at a shallow level. We had to uh, really sort of prune and narrow down our, our result areas to get to something sustainable for us to continue. This is just a quick slide on, um, on our roadmap for how we did the strategic planning process. First, we gathered our data, and you should have a copy of the trend report in your packet. Um, next, we reviewed our 15 current result areas. We knew we had to narrow those down, so we developed a set of criteria and then applied the criteria to each of the 15 result areas. That helped us score what came out as the top priority. After scoring them, we brought them out to the community and asked for community input from parents and providers to see if it resonated with them as well. And um, here you can see um, the results of what we ended up with in our strategic hierarchy. Um, we pruned from 15 to 10 results. We kept our major headings, which were health, uh, early care and development, and empowered families. Um, and we, we will use a, a two-pronged approach through this strategic plan to address those 10 result areas. Um, the, the result areas you see in yellow, those are direct services, mostly funded partners, uh, county and government agencies, school districts, nonprofits to provide direct services. The green uh, boxes that you see are more of systems change work through policy, um, through public education and awareness, um, and also through some leveraging of additional dollars. And then the hybrids, the sort of yellow and green, those result areas will incorporate both direct services and systems change work to, to impact change. 
Uh, beginning on page 16 of the strategic plan, you'll see that each of our 10 result areas has a page dedicated uh, to covering the specific topics that you see on this slide. Um, and rather than going through all 10 of those with you, I just selected one to highlight and kind of walk you through um, what that looks like in the plan. So um, the first one that you'll see is on uh, increased breastfeeding. So we looked at breastfeeding rates among the total population and sort of talked about the need as well as within specific uh, race and ethnicities. We developed three indicators to watch, um, to track on this uh, result area, and we identified two direct service strategies that could be implemented and five of our policy systems change um, strategies. Uh, so in the plan, you'll see 10 pages of this uh, dedicated to um, why each result area is needed and what direction we're headed to when we create the implementation plan, um, which is sort of where our greater detail will be provided. And of course, we learned a lot throughout the process of creating the strategic plan. Um, we learned um, that our trend reports showed us that we still have disparities in our community. Um, and that um, while we held the community forums and, and really tried to get feedback from uh, parents out in all uh, districts, many parents well, we purposely went to parents who weren't part of our provider network, who weren't receiving services, but many parents still didn't even know that First Five existed, and they were sort of um, excited to learn about these, but it, it showed that we needed to probably get the word out, continue to do better to get the word out about what services are available. We discovered that we cannot meet the need alone. This plan helped us to identify some areas where we could tap existing or new partners to leverage their funding to do some of our work. Um, and we decided to create a system sustainability plan that will be um, brought to the commission in August that really highlights how we plan to bring in um, new dollars or leverage other funding or create policies that will help us toward our end of uh, ensuring children have uh, what they need to succeed. And finally, um, we have to be more, str more strategic with our financial resources. Again, learning of others that are, that are funding in this area and then hopefully co-funding with them um, in the future. <coughs> Oops, sorry. This is our um, three-year spending plan. We have a little over $60 million, or about $20 million per year to spend. Uh, that is a 21% roughly reduction. 90% of our funding uh, will be direct investment into programs. 7% is our administration. And then a 3% is uh, used for evaluating our investments, making sure that we are being successful in those investments. Just load those all in. Um, so what's next is that once we have our, our strategic plan finalized, that's sort of what we want to achieve, um, then we'll create an implementation plan, which has more of the details about how much funding will go to each result area and the types of programs that we would fund. Um, we'll create that system sustainability plan that I mentioned um, to identify uh, policy opportunities, parent engagement, and maximizing our financial resources. And once those two are done, then we'll do it an evaluation plan, help us track what, it, uh, what we are trying to achieve. All of those pieces um, are, will be complete by the fall, and then we can start our competitive bid uh, process to award contracts. The new plan does have some implications for the county because there is a reduction in uh, our investment. Um, and it, all of the programs, all of our continuing programs will be taking a cut of anywhere between 10% and 40% moving forward. Um, and First Five internally is taking up cuts for our operations as well. Um, 
specifically we're looking in for county funded programs many of those programs that we picked up in 2009 um, will receive cuts or be eliminated um, and overall we have five million dollars less to spend in your districts which means fewer people will be served um, but we are doing our very best to try to identify others who can pick up some of those programs and can work with us excuse me just a second julie Mr. Sure. Sir? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, I just, I, I, Julie, I don't know if you're going to get to it or not, but you do have uh, Birth and Beyond cited here, um, especially uh, as it relates to crisis intervention. And I just want to kind of give our, our board a preview of coming attractions. Um, I was given my first five briefing yesterday for the upcoming meeting, and um, in that briefing, uh, Julie presented uh, a number of um, uh, slides that had, I think, some very compelling information relative to the investment that is made through Birth and Beyond, uh, administered, you know, at our nine family resource centers, uh, as it relates to decreasing the the human toll and certainly the fiscal costs associated with CPS intervention. Okay. And so I'm here with asking uh, Julie to keep that in mind, perhaps for a future. Uh, separate presentation for this board, perhaps even as it relates to uh, some of our budgetary um, uh, deliberation that will occur in two months' time, because I think it's it's very relevant um, and it's not very it's not incidental. It's actually pretty impressive the the depth to which, uh, especially the birth and beyond investments uh, made in part through First Five, but certainly through our own Department of Health and Human Services Department. Are really producing uh, great returns, I think, when it comes to uh, the recidivism um, of uh, parents and children that have been touched uh, by CPS. Definitely, not just for the zero to five, but the kid, the families with children six to seventeen years of age, sure. also um, dropping those recidivism rates is key, and that's. Uh, what our commission will be hearing about from the Center for. Uh, Caps from CAPSI coming up next month. So, could, um, could I just ask a question on that sure. though, and maybe to you, uh, Nav? Um, you know, we get we get this as the presentation of the strategic plan, but I think this page that's currently up on the screen uh, certainly calls to mind. I think uh, his concerns that I, I, I would have. I mean, it certainly drew my attention to Birth and Beyond, but even the Smile Keepers. And we've enjoyed the opportunity to have this investment, certainly in families and children in this community, working side by side with uh, Department of Human Assistance, Department of Health and Human Services in the county, a whole lot of um, nonprofit providers. I guess I, I'm concerned as you're doing budget development, if we're, you know this comes at a time when you're you know currently putting together a budget, I don't know how this has been taken into consideration or not. But I guess I would suggest. To maybe build off of Mr. Cerna's comments that this needs to be taken into account because um, if we're not, then we're going to be presented with certain aspects that, that have been supplemented by a first five that are going to be deficited when we have their conversations in June. So I guess my my point is is that uh, this needs to be taken into account, and I would expect that you know the presentations leading up to budget, but certainly for June budget discussions, that we have some indication of what this means uh, because if it's not made up here and it's not made up over here on the county side, then that means people fall through the cracks. And again, we're still responsible, as Mr. Cerner said, for CPS, for you know, foster family support, for uh, a whole lot of things. And you know, a lot of times we, you know, things go by the wayside and then we just end up picking it up somewhere else and you know, paying the cost there, both human costs as well as uh, contributions from county sources that are limited to begin with. So I guess I would ask that this get into the analysis if it isn't already incorporated, so. Okay, thanks. And one Julie? thing I can say about that is these are cuts that are coming in 2018-19, so it wouldn't affect our next year. The budget that y'all are working okay. on right now, um, we're in the third and final year of our strategic of our current strategic plan, but we like to plan a year in advance so, <coughs> so we can address some of these issues and, and give a lot of um, a time for forethought and planning so okay. that we're not right. just pulling out Thank programs. you for the clarification. It does sure. say 2018. So yes, 18-19, okay, yeah. Okay. Um, that concludes my uh, my presentation. So I'm happy to there's, answer any there's questions. There's what it's all about. All those little. That's know, toddlers, exactly so. what it's about. Okay. All right. Any questions for uh, Julie uh, and the strategic plan? Uh, just a uh, hearty thank you to uh, 
all of our uh, very capable staff and uh, committee members and those that have uh, really done the, the hard work to um, apply some careful thinking about the future of how we work uh, with less and continue to do some great things in this community. Thank yeah. you very and I would just note too that the, you basically had a, <clears throat> a uh, call out to the community here just a few months ago, and again I know that uh, Supervisor Cerna, but your your entire uh, commission, along with a number of uh, folks who are experts, certainly in um, in both education and health, uh, came together uh, for a, a session for a better part of an afternoon. And I would just say I think that was important because you laid out the essence of the strategic plan, but also I think preparing folks not just for the you know uh, reduced funding, but I think for you know kind of the, the what next, as one of your slides pointed out. So I want to certainly compliment you, and I think that was a good call to action, and I think uh, we'll lend itself hopefully to uh, some, uh, you know, strengthened partnerships uh, as we look forward to the years to come. So Thank you, and thanks to all of yeah. you who came to that event. It really meant a lot yeah. to have you yeah. there. Okay, thanks, Julie. Thanks. Okay, this is a receiving file, uh, and uh, if there's any, no other comments, then we'll put this into the consideration for budget development and program uh, outlines uh, as we look to the years to come. All right. That's the last order of business. Then, before we get to uh, the uh, one of the main parts of the agenda this morning, that is our volunteer recognition. So, you want to call that item, Flo? Yep. Item 41 is the presentation of resolution honoring Sacramento 2016 outstanding volunteers. Okay. <clears throat> uh, we want to again welcome all of you, and uh, uh, as we do. Um, each year we take an opportunity during one of our sessions in the spring to uh, acknowledge outstanding volunteers uh, in Sacramento County, uh, uh, many of whom are here this morning, but uh, many who aren't able to join with us. But uh, I think uh, as you get a chance to hear some of the uh, contributions of folks that are seated next, next to you and the rows behind you in front of you, you get a real sense that uh, of the breadth and the depth of uh, the volunteer contribution to uh, the quality of life here in our community. And so uh, we are here to appreciate you today. And I know we have a very um, uh, good uh, MC who I'm going to call forward in just a moment who will you know, help work us move through the program and recognize uh, uh, many of you in the audience and we do have a reception afterwards uh, out in the foyer and so once we get through this uh, we will invite all of you to stay and join us for that and we'll take a brief break from our board session to join you as well so uh, with that uh, again with our thanks to start out with I'm going to invite uh, Aaron Mori to the uh, uh, dais and or to the podium and ask her to um, make some opening comments and uh, she's uh, you just heard the first five strategic plans she also serves, serves with the first five commission staff and so she's kind of doing double duty Duty here this morning. So, Erin, good morning. Thanks. Let's give a round of applause before she starts. Let's go. Thank you, Chair Natoli, yeah. and good morning, Commissioners. So now I'm going to turn around the microphone so you guys see the back of me. So, and then I will address the crowd. This is not normal. <laughs> So when you get dressed in the morning, this way you can dress backwards so this part <laughs> looks good. So it definitely has been an eventful uh, morning and uh, as part of First Five, I'm glad you got to hear a little bit about it and the morning is just gonna get better because today we are here to recognize you. It is our annual ceremony to recognize outstanding volunteers and it is an honor for me to present this ceremony and MC it for the third year in a row. So all of Sacramento County's programs support a wide variety of needs in our region, and we couldn't do it alone. We rely on volunteers, just like every single one of you, to help deliver these essential services that make Sacramento County such a great place to live. Now, isn't Sacramento County a great place to live? Yes. So before we get started with the program, we want to acknowledge county leadership for making this ceremony a priority to recognize you, our volunteer champions. I would like to thank the Board of Supervisors, the County Executive Nav Gill and the Executive Cabinet, and the Personnel Department that plans this event. So we have a full room. <laughs> So it is an honor to see so many family members that you extended this invitation to to come out today and acknowledge your dedication and your service. It's it, just seeing a full room is wonderful. But I'm wondering how many times have you been here? Raise your hand if this is the first time that you've been in the board chambers. Pretty impressive, isn't it? 
This is where a lot of the major decisions in the county are made, and you got to see that today. You can come back any time, though. You're welcome any time, so <laughs> you don't have to be shy. You can talk any time for three minutes. <laughs> Okay, so let's get started with some of these phenomenal numbers. So volunteers, nine, over 9,000 volunteers that we had, and the hours you dedicated are more than 381,000. What that comes out to is over $10 million of your time, and I think we all need a round of applause for that. So even though as volunteers you do not get paid, we took those hours of service and we calculated that total value and have an honorary check that we would like to present to the Board of Supervisors. Come so if I could get the Board of Supervisors to come on down, we'll take a picture with the check. We would like to present a symbolic check to you representing the significant value of our volunteer work dedicated in 2016. Now let's take a few pictures. That's $10.7 million in hours, and we'll present it right back there. So now we're gonna get on with recognizing our departments. And if Chair Natoli would like to come down here, then he can take photos with all of the resolutions being presented today. <laughs> so we are honoring six departments and nearly 200 people. And so we know you want to take your pictures, and we know you want to post them on Facebook and Twitter. So we ask you that you please tag uh, Sacramento County at hashtag Sacramento County CA. We'd love to see all your pictures on there. But we do ask that you please stay on the steps, because we have a professional photographer here today. You saw her. And she will get those photos to your volunteer coordinator by the end of the day. And they will be really nice, high-resolution photos. You can Photoshop me out if you want. So. <laughs> Our first presentation is from Animal Care and Regulation. Many of you know this as the Bradshaw Animal Shelter. I would like to bring down Department Director Dave Dickinson and his volunteer coordinator Celeste Ingrid here today. Please join me at the podium. Good morning, Chair. Chair Ntoli and board members. Uh, it's my privilege to be here today to pay recognition and give thanks to not only the volunteers at the Bradshaw Animal Shelter, but all the volunteers throughout the county, uh, the thousands of volunteers that uh, give their, their time and effort uh, on a yearly basis. Today, I'd like to um, recognize a, a special volunteer, uh, Mr. Dave McClanahan, if you'd come down here, Dave. He's been a... Uh, Dave McClanahan has been a, a, a volunteer at the shelter for 23 years. I've known him for the last 17 years. Uh, not only is he a volunteer at the shelter, but he's also been a, a county employee for over 30 years. Uh, he is a jack of all trades in the, in the, in the Bradshaw shelter. He um, does a lot of the things that uh, nobody else can do. He drives a, a pickup and trailer for us to uh, pick up donated food donations from uh, large grocery outlets which allows us to have a pet pantry program for the underprivileged uh, folks in Sacramento County that have pets that uh, don't have the, the needed income to, to provide them the necessary food on a monthly basis. So those people come to the shelter and pick up a free uh, bag of food or 30 or 60 days supply of food. He also does a lot of cleanup around the shelter on, uh, in his spare time. We've got a large warehouse. We've got a sally port and a barn area. Uh, a lot of times uh, donations come in and Donations tend to grow and multiply and 
gets kind of out of hand sometimes and he volunteers his services to come in there and, and clean up that mess and reorganize for us, allows us to put uh, uh, those donations to a better use. Uh, he also drives a, uh, a, a truck that carries the, the pulls the Batmobile, which is the Bradshaw Animal Assistance Team Mobile <coughs> Spay Neuter Clinic. Um, and also does vaccine clinics on, on Sundays uh, throughout the year. He, he pulls that out there in the morning, stays for the event a lot of times, and then brings it back to the shelter in the afternoon. Uh, that's a program that also helps the, the people in need out there in the community. So he's, uh, he's been doing, doing this with us for the last 17, or 23 years, 17 that I know of. He's a selfless individual. He's also a very good uh, cook and chef. Uh, he provides on many occasions throughout the year, special luncheons for the staff and volunteers at the Bradshaw Shelter. And that uh, we appreciate him for as well. So congratulations, Dave, on being selected one of our outstanding volunteers. Celeste Ingrid here, our volunteer coordinator, to present the next uh, uh, outstanding volunteer recognition. Thank you. Good morning. Um, we have a very special, uh, or representation of a very special group of volunteers here today. I'd like to call down Laura Delight, Sarah Delight, and uh, uh, I think we're missing uh, Vicki Oberg. I'm so sorry. Vicki Oberg. And I'd also like to, these are three of the five coordinators of the STAMP program, and I'll talk a little bit about the STAMP program shortly here, but let's get them down. And I'd also like to call down two uh, team members of the program, uh, Dalton Branson and Joanna Turner. Come on down. <laughs> So the STAMP team program, well, STAMP is, stands for Sacramento Animal, Sacramento Teen Animal Membership Program, and it's a fantastic uh, teen program at the Bradshaw Shelter. Uh, it was established in 19, I'm sorry, 2013, and since that time has grown to more than 100 teens, ages 12 to 18, who support the shelter in many ways. Um, I want to mention that Dalton here has been with the program, he's one of the, uh, the founding members uh, uh, since 2013, and um, we're also missing from the lineup here. Uh, 98 uh, plus uh, volunteers of the program who uh, were part of the 2016 program, and also two coordinators, Teresa Kloss and um, Miguel Mercado, who could not be here today. Um, but let me tell you a little bit about the program. So this is a fantastic group of kids who come into the shelter uh, every other weekend, every other Saturday and Sunday. They overrun the shelter, and you can find them. You can find them in the classroom doing creative projects. Um, such as making humane education bulletin boards um, to inform the people coming into the shelter about different topics, whether it's hot dogs or kitten season, cruelty and neglect, um, various other craft projects and signage for the shelter. Um, you'll find them cleaning windows. You'll find them doing laundry and dishes and other manual tasks throughout the shelter. Um, they work as hard as any adult in the, in the shelter, and they are a fabulous team. Um, the program itself is truly unique in that it cultivates their personal in and interpersonal skills. The, the kids um, are, come from a variety of backgrounds. Um, some are shy, some are more, more introverted, some are very open and gregarious, and they complement each other wonderfully, and they make the most cohesive team. Um, beyond that, the, the program itself allows for their hidden talents to bloom and gives them skills that they'll take forward into their adulthood. Um, 
One of the biggest accomplishments of the program has recently um, been the inclusion in a uh, PBS documentary series called Shelter Me, uh, which focuses on unique and innovative programs within municipal animal shelters. And their uh, reading program was a focus of the documentary. So the kids get together and they will sit in front of the animals, whether it be the dogs or the cats or with the rabbits, and read to them. And it's a calming activity. So to reduce the shelter, the stresses that the animals have in the shelter. Um, it's a fabulous um, program and with demonstrated results in calming the animals and relieving their stress. Um, I encourage you all to check out Shelter Me um, on the PBS website. Um, there should be a link there, I think, to the um, documentary. It has, has already aired. I don't know that it's running actively anymore. Um, but I do understand also, and correct me if I'm wrong, that it's possible that um, the cable uh, network channel, thir or channel 14, which this, um, these meetings air on, will also air the shelter me um, episode as well, uh, dates to be announced. Um, but um, it was a wonderful recognition. The, an, another portion of that documentary was a focused on a running program in Southern California, um, a high school running program running with shelter dogs. And um, through, the, through that, um, that documentary, we have been connected with that program or with that um, that school. They've asked for the stamp program to help them coordinate a similar um, teen program within their uh, uh, school or within their shelter, and in turn will impart their experience with their running program uh, on us so that we can create that at the Bradshaw shelter as well. Um, one really beautiful thing I want to say about this program is that. They are a cohesive team. Um, they celebrate individual accomplishments as if they are one. Um, they are the most positive group, um, just a fantastic group of people. And they really are the future of animal welfare advocates in our area and with the shelter. So um, I want to thank all of them so much. Um, they are just, I can't say enough good about them. So thank you so much. And before, um, I also would like to acknowledge Dave McClanahan, one of the hardest working volunteers in the shelter has been for, as you know, 23 years. Um, no job too big, too small, um, too hard. He's there from the beginning to the end, and then asking, what else can I do? Um, so Dave, thank you so much, and thank you, Stamp. We're so proud to have you as part of our volunteer force. Thank you. So the stamp program that Celeste was just referring to is going to be airing on our Metro Cable Station, Channel 14, uh, Wednesday, uh, April 26th at 9 p.m., so very timely. And if you don't uh, receive Metro Cable Channel 14, you can also watch it on the Sac County Streaming at sacramentocable.tv, and then again also on our public um, broadcasting station. <laughs> So next up, we're going to have a presentation from the Department of Health and Human Services and uh, Department Director Dr. Sherry Heller. Good morning. Hi. Hello. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you. The um, epidemiology, I practiced saying that. Epidemiology, I can pronounce. The epidemiology crew at the Public Health Division nominated, nominated Megan Key for her volunteer hours. Megan, you can slowly be making your way down here while I'm talking about you. 
Megan donated 300 hours in 2016 over a six month period at Public Health. She had learned some biostatistics skills during her master's studies when she was getting a master's in public health, right? and uh, grew interested in the opioid addiction issue. She used these biostatistic skills to help our opioid task force of Sacramento County to um, analyze what's going on with prescription drug abuse in our county. So she was able to, it's hard for me to explain this, but she was able to analyze this monster data set that we have on prescribing practices so that we could figure out very carefully and precisely and analytically um, who's getting high dose prescriptions of painkillers, who's getting renewals more than one would expect, people who were going from doctor to doctor, and as a result of this incredible statistical analysis, the opioid task force was able to very precisely make recommendations for what our goals should be next. So we know how to work on prescribing practices. We know how to change behavior while still giving people in our community good options for pain management. So you can see how important, I mean, it's, it's a mathematical talent that she has, but think about the implications of her. And this was all volunteer. The work she did, the technique she used, the data set she used has now been um, shared with the state Department of Public Health so that other counties will be following our lead with this kind of analysis. And I just learned today that um, next up, Megan is going to be studying for her PhD. So pretty soon it'll be Dr. P. Please join me. Can we get, um, I know Dr. Law is here, our addictionologist, and uh, Jamie White, our epidemiology, all the public health crew, come on up and be in the picture, please. With Dr. Megan. Almost, almost. Here. Proclamations is for the sub senior companion volunteers. And listen, out of, out of respect for everybody's time and out of my personal nervousness about having these folks all come down the steps simultaneously and go back up in a reasonable amount of time, I think what we'll do is just have them stand for a moment so you can see who they are. Would the senior companion volunteers stand up? about them so you know why we're, while we're uh, uh, respecting and why we're honoring this group of volunteers. And then I think we'll let you stand one more time at the end and we'll do our photograph during the break, okay? We'll, we'll get the professional photographer and we'll do a nice group photograph out there under the county uh, emblem rather than have you all come down the steps. So the Senior Companion Program has been, with, uh, has been active in the county since 1975 and been sponsored by the County of Sacramento since 1994. Um, seniors age 55 plus are volunteering to provide person-to-person -person service supporting adults with impairments to maintain their independent living or to provide respite for their home caregivers. They commit to serving between 15 and 40 hours weekly, visiting clients in their homes at least four hours a week. They, you know, they take them out to shop, they go to tea. Is tea have a euphemism here? I don't know. They go for tea, they keep them company depending on the needs. And uh, the quality of life of the individuals that they're helping is, is changed significantly because, you know, depression among seniors often comes from isolation. And that's what this program is designed to address. Some of the um, uh, effects volunteer Thomas Hergett's case. With his help, his client was able to get out to the bocce ball courts during the final months of her life. You may have read about that. Some of the volunteer client relationships turn into beautiful friendships, such as for Andre Myhan and his client, both Air Force veterans. Um, and the two of them describe each other as brothers from another mother. <laughs> 
The volunteers are also eyes and ears to help clients um, who might become potential victims of elder abuse. So they, and, it, and you can even have life-saving events. Volunteer Anna, Anna, wave or something so we know who you are. You're here, right? There, see Anna over there? During her routine visit, she found that her 85-year-old client had fallen on the kitchen floor and had been there for a couple of hours. Anna heard his cries for help, called 911, and firefighters went through one of the windows in the client's bedroom. The client told us, if Anna didn't show up when she did and didn't call 911, who knows where I would have ended up. Anna is a godsend. I think the world of her, and she helps me every week. This is an excellent program, and you have no idea how it's helping seniors like me. These are an unsung group of heroes. We're proud to honor them today. So stand up again. And, and, uh, and senior, senior and adult services staff who nominated them, you should stand too. And let, let's recognize you all. You'll get them. It sure is wonderful to see such an amazing turnout today. Thank you so much for coming out. And then after, um, as Dr. Heller said, please go out there and we'll have the photographer follow you and get some photos. So next up, we have the probation department. And I'd like to invite Chief Lee Seal to the podium. Thank you. Chair Natoli, members of the board, uh, Chief Lee Seal, it's an honor to be here on behalf of the probation department, recognizing some of the many people who make our department better each and every day and serve the members of uh, the Sacramento County. I'd first like to honor a very special per person and call her up right now, Maria Ferguson. There's quite a big fan club for Maria. Um, Maria is a very special person. She uh, lost her mom at a very young age, uh, growing up as a young girl in Panama. One of six young kids. She was raised by her grandmother, hence her nickname, Grandma, or as the kids call her, Gma. I'm a little older, I'm gonna stick with grandma. Mm -hmm. um, she came to the United States from Panama uh, in her early 20s uh, to New York, if you can imagine that, and then to Sacramento in 1969. Mm -hmm. Worked hard, put herself th through school, became a nurse, served this community as a nurse working for Sutter General for 20 years, ret retired in 2010, and has been volunteering, uh, serving particularly the young boys in our juvenile hall for a number of years. Um, she, don't let the nickname fool you, she's tough, <laughs> okay? I've seen her shoot a glance at a kid from the day space who was up in his room through his window. <laughs> And, and got him back into shape. Um, she's, she's not just there to love the kids, but she does love the kids. She's there to hold them accountable, set an example. And I'll say, she doesn't just set an example for those kids, she sets an example for me, for my management team, supervisors, officers, everyone inside Juvenile Hall. How to love those kids, how to treat them with respect, yes. but also shape them up a little bit. <laughs> She offers life skills classes every week. She teaches these kids all kinds of things. She teaches them uh, how to serve time, how to tell time. Mm -hmm. uh, and I can tell you that on a personal note, whenever I'm in juvenile hall walking around, it seems like you are always there. How many hours a week do you, are you in, inside our juvenile hall? 40. 40. 40 it's a full-time job. Yeah. Well, so on behalf of the Sacramento County Probation Department, I'd like to thank and honor Grandma Maria Ferguson.
right. Uh, now I would like to uh, welcome and invite down to join me uh, the members of the Sacramento County Juvenile Record Sealing Clinic. Come on down. So this is long overdue. The record sealing clinic, if you're not familiar with uh, the way things work in juvenile probation, uh, the sealing of juvenile records is a very important step in setting young people uh, forward in life after their involvement with the justice system to give them a fresh start. Uh, after having held them accountable, they've paid their debt, they've performed whatever uh, community service, maybe they've uh, served some time, maybe they've uh, undergone some treatment or uh, done other things to better themselves. The final step in this important work is the work that the people behind me do. So let me tell you a little bit about who they are. Uh, first of all, we standing behind me, we have our supervising probation officer, Mary Irving, uh, who is over seen this project for a long time. We have our senior deputy probation officer, Catherine McCoy, who really deserves the credit for this program because it's been, yeah, she deserves, a, she deserves a special hand because it's really been uh, her work years ago that created this program and uh, it's been her child ever since. And then finally we have our probation officer Raquel Rapp as well who uh, does uh, incredible work as part of this team. But the volunteers themselves are who we're here to honor and I, and I want to thank each of them by name. Uh, first we have Daniel Durea from uh, HB Enterprise. We have Scott Pink. Scott Pink from DLA Piper, which is a law firm, a uh, prominent law firm uh, in the area. We have John Barnes, formerly of DLA Piper, now with King and & Spalding. And we have Christine Foos from DLA Piper as well. These attorneys uh, perform an incredible pro bono service on behalf of all these young people. Uh, several times uh, a year, uh, as many as 12 times in some years, six times in other years, we hold a clinic at night where people who have juvenile records can come and free of charge get this expert legal consultation to help clear their records and set them uh, on a path. Uh, the clinic has now served over 300, uh, I want to say young people, but if you come by the clinic at night, you'll see that it's often adults who are coming in now to clear, clear up their records uh, uh, from years before. So we're really proud of the work that this clinic has done on behalf of young adults uh, in our community, and I want to thank and honor uh, all the volunteers who are so deserving of recognition today. So my thanks. Thank you, Chief Seal. I see Gma giving me the look, saying we're halfway done with this, so <laughs> we'll move on. 
Now I would like to uh, bring up Regional Parks and Department Director Jeff Leatherman. I right, thank you for being here. I'd like to invite Kyle Bolin to come on down um, from my Kasumas River Preserve staff to uh, help me recognize our first volunteer. Um, and just on his heels, if I can have uh, Robin Rog Rogerson come down. Um, we are recognizing Robin today, one of our volunteers at our Kasumas River Preserve. Um, and just in this past year, uh, Robin has um, consistently volunteered 16 to 20 hours a week with over 750 hours of volunteer work at our Kasumas River Preserve. And we peeled him away um, from his volunteer duties actually this week. We have our canoe mobile, which is the second annual, is that right? Canoe, third annual canoe mobile. And Robin is on our um, team. On the land side of the team, we have a water side of the team that takes 16, 17 kids out in a canoe. Um, over 700 kids um, are down at the preserve during this week experiencing what the preserve has to offer. Um, but over the course of the last three years, Robin has been one of our volunteers in a variety of different roles. He was on our maintenance and repairs team. He was also um, on our nature walk team. He was on our visitor center team. He was on our paddle tours team. He also does our waterfowl surveys, conduct, conducted wood ducks, nesting surveys, habitat restoration work days, native plant garden work days, and I'm tired at K-12 education opportunities. So without Robin and many volunteers like him, our programs out at the preserve would not nearly be as successful. Um, and so we appreciate his hard work, his dedication, and his time that he has provided to the community and to the kids of our community as well. So Robin, thank you very much for your time. We appreciate you very much. And as Robin's heading back up, I have my uh, TRS friends, um, and more specifically, our uh, Special Olympic coaches uh, for our Chargers team. So if they can start making their way down. Um, and Kathy and Jen, come on down with them. So 34 years ago, our Special Olympic team started uh, with our TRS uh, program. And the coaches, not all of them could be here, but we have coaches from a variety of our um, teams. And I'll list um, all of the different coaches that we have. But we have um, a variety of coaches from soccer, basketball, floor hockey, track, swimming, bowling, bocce. Um, and they serve hundreds of athletes every year for a variety of programs, activities, um, and events. And these coaches volunteer about eight weeks of their time leading up to a couple of different tournaments um, throughout the year and spend not only time getting to know our participants but spending time understanding what their needs are what their abilities are and coaching them through um, really a life-changing event um, there is kind of a floating joke around the office that the coaches behind me represent more gold medals than michael phelps um, and they bring them home to sacramento county every year um, there is a hockey coach behind me and i won't call her out specifically kathy um, who <laughs> won um, and beat one of our floor hockey teams who we've been trying to beat for at least what the last decade or so something like that last 30 years apparently so that was a big win in the last year um, but we uh, just want to celebrate um, our special olympic coaches for all of the athletes that they serve throughout the year for all the sports that they provide um, and it's a tremendous time um, and dedication i will also point out that some of the coaches behind me coach not only one but sometimes two three and four sports um, throughout the year so thank you very much for your time and dedication we appreciate it very much just like to say that if any of you have not attended uh, a Special Olympics event with your Sacramento County Chargers, you don't know what you're missing. They're awesome athletes and people. Thank you.
Saturday, May 6th is the track and field tournament and the swimming tournament at Whitney High School in Rockland. All right, go Chargers. Right. If you'd like to have more information about that, please go online to sackcounty.net and go on the Therapeutic Recreation Services. I'm sure it will be a great game to check out. Next up, we have the Sheriff's Department. We have Chief Dave Torgetson here, and anyone from the department that would like to come down as well. Okay, good morning everyone. Uh, I'm honored to be here to, this morning on behalf of Sheriff Scott Jones. And before we get started, I'd like to ask any volunteers for the Sheriff's Department that are in attendance today, can you please stand? On behalf of Sheriff Scott Jones, I'd like to publicly thank all of our volunteers who are wonderful and so giving of their time to make our community better and a safer place. Uh, and thank you to the county and the board for giving us this opportunity once again to be able to honor um, some very deserving recipients. Uh, today's uh, group of volunteers, uh, there's an individual award and a group award, come from our North Division. Uh, with me today is Captain Chris Palmer, who's the commander of the no Sheriff's North Division, which handles patrol services north of the American River in the unincorporated area. Sherry Carhart from the uh, Crime Prevention Specialist from the North area, and Kristen, oh, that's right, Kristen, how are you? Uh, uh, we've got De Dennis Perens, Marilyn Macias, and Helen Shoup. So we're going to let ladies go first, so we'll do our group award first. So uh, um, I've had the honor and uh, privilege of working with many great volunteers throughout the years, including the three that are up here with me today. Um, Helen Shoup has been uh, volunteering for over 10 years and has given over 2,900 hours of service to the Sheriff's Department in the Sheriff's North area. The group that Helen and, and Marilyn work primarily with is our volunteers in partnership with the sheriff, specifically crime prevention. So they work with crime prevention, uh, neighborhood watch groups, and businesses in the various areas throughout the, the North County. Marilyn Macias has been with us for over eight years and has given over 3,300 hours of service. So uh, for that, I would like to thank you and recognize them both for a job well done. And next will be our individual award. Uh, Dennis Bruns has been with the Sheriff's Department for over 10 years and is, has amassed over 10,000 volunteer hours over that time. Dennis has volunteered uh, many hours in the service centers taking cold crime reports. Uh, and by taking these cold crime reports in our service centers, volunteers do us a great deal of uh, free up the officers from uh, 
to where they could be out on the street handling in progress calls. So handling calls in the service center, being there as a go-to person within our various service centers. And also uh, he's on the VIPS patrol, which goes out and looks for blight in the neighborhood. Uh, they do uh, vacation checks on residences, so uh, residents can call in and have the sheriff's department come by and check on their homes while they're away and they can report any suspicious behavior and that type of thing. But uh, Dennis, that's quite a, quite a feat, uh, 10,000 hours, and uh, congratulations to you and thank you very much. Thank you, Chief Torgerson and Captain Palmer. So 10,000 hours, we all have something to reach for now. I think we all have a goal. So our last group of volunteers that we'll recognize this morning is from Waste Management and Recycling. And if I could ask Superintendent Chris Selsey to come down to the podium, please. Good morning. So uh, we're the last one because we're a W, of course. So anyway, I, I <laughs> okay, perfect. Uh, I'd like to bring Donald Johnson down. <laughs> Donald Johnson and his wife Angeline, uh, about two years ago, established uh, starting with a penny, and what this 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 particular. Um, service does is it 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 feeds correct yeah feeds feeds the the homeless and feeds the people who want to be fed so um, you know he puts in about 20 to 25 hours a week on top of his job he's been with us at the landfill for the last three years and he so on his uh, vacation time and his free time he he uh, services the South Sacramento area and so I just wanted it's solely funded by uh, by by Donald and his wife. So if you guys want to give some money to help out, that'd be that'd be fantastic. <laughs> so, but I, I just wanted to, <laughs> on behalf of waste management in the county of Sacramento, I wanted to honor uh, Donald Johnson Jr. And in, in fact, I wanted to honor his wife too. But she's there working. Yes, so we actually uh, she couldn't make it because we actually giving a full giveaway now. <laughs> so, so excellent. So I just wanted to let I just wanted to acknowledge that. All right. Thank you. Well, I'm not, I'm not good at this. My wife actually does all of this stuff. But what we, what we do is, um, to be honest with you, it was given to her as a dream. So she's real passionate about it, and we, we both are. And our motto is, if we have anything to do with it, nobody goes hungry. So we actually give food giveaways three days a week, and next month we're going to five days a week. So we can go to the ones that can't make it. We're always going to be open for anybody in need to eat. So you can actually look us up at www.startingwiththepenny.com. And she's, um, we only been open for, what, two, two and a half years. And we have grown tremendously. Um, we serve like maybe 2,500, 2,500 to 3,000 people a month. So, um, 
So it's a lot of hard work, and we're, we're steady growing, we're work in progress. She was up all night last night to like 3 o'clock in the morning, uh, building her, our website, upgrading it, because we're doing it all by ourselves. So if you guys want to look us up, we we'll appreciate any help that we can get. Website again? www.startingwithapenny.com. And starting with the penny is start with a penny. Start where you're at. <laughs> Just keeps on giving. Thank you so much for the donation. So. Well, today we've had the opportunity of hearing so many stories of devotion, and all of you were so deserving of a recognition from our county leadership. So let's give yourselves a round of applause. So as you saw from today, we can't do it alone. We need talented folks like you to volunteer. So please continue to volunteer. We've set that benchmark now at 10,000 hours, so <laughs> tell a friend, tell a family member. The contact information is right up there on your screen. So just give them a call or go online. So today we recognize nearly 100 volunteers this morning. Congratulations to every single one of you. I wanna take a moment to acknowledge the team that put this volunteer ceremony together. First to Chair Natoli and the District 5 staff for their proclamations. <laughs> Starting the board meeting with the Sheriff's Department color guard. Our dedicated photographer, also from the Sheriff's Department, Julie Prater. Contact your volunteer coordinator. You'll be getting those professional photos by the end of today. And then also to the committee members that made this possible. And it comes through the personnel to serv services with Director David Devine, Tanya Brow, the volunteer ceremony chairperson, Chris Baker from Community Development, General Services for all of the parking support, and our Communications and Media Office. Thank you all for making this annual event possible. And so now I'm gonna hand it over to Supervisor Natoli for closing remarks, and afterwards, please join us in the lobby for some refreshments. Thank you. Well, thank you, Aaron, and uh, one more round of applause for Aaron. Great job again. <laughs> okay, we've spent the morning with us. We've got some refreshments, and we're going to take about a 15-minute break. So we'll be back in session here, but we'll break for a little bit, and we'll join you in the uh, foyer. Have a safe uh, drive home, and a uh, good rest of the day. Thank you so much for your volunteer hours. Thank you.